My name is John Hodgson. I'm one of the illustrators working on the One Ring for Cubicle 7 and Sophisticated Games. And in this video, we're going to talk about monsters. <laughs> so monsters are obviously very important in any role-playing game. They often form at least a, a, a large proportion of the adversaries you'll, you'll face in the game. And when we're talking about Tolkien, of course, we have uh, some very specific monsters such as orcs, trolls, Urukai, spiders, wogs, very familiar. Um, but as mentioned in another video, we were starting with a blank slate because we're not using the movie imagery, we're not using pre existing imagery. So the starting phase is always a huge number of sketches, some of them you can see here, um, mostly for orcs and orcish type creatures. And uh, it's, a, it's a really interesting and challenging job where you've got to start from scratch to design monsters. So often, as a fantasy illustrator, especially in gaming, you work with existing intellectual properties, a wide variety of companies, and they give you the, uh, the information to work on. But getting the chance to start fresh um, means you have to push the boundaries a little bit and you know, try out a lot of different things and see what sticks. We had a lot of back and forth on this stuff to get to get these uh, orcs and trolls right. So this is a, the initial sketches I sent for two types of troll, various types of troll in the game, and I believe this one we're zooming in on is a mountain troll. Um, and I've got a little bit of screen capture painting this guy. Um, this is vastly speeded up. This is at 800% speed. Um, the basis I'm, I'm painting onto there is, is, a, is a photograph of a, of a bronze statue, actually, from uh, from Helsinki, which is kind of funny. If you've watched the other videos, I'll talk a bit about the Kalevala, you know, the Finnish folk epic. And, uh, I took some photos of a, be a beautiful statue in, in Helsinki and super close up, and it, it, it it makes a beautiful texture to work on top of, especially if you've got a knobbly, gnarly guy like this, this dude. I was pretty happy with these trolls. There was an, another one I did, a little bit more um, civilized is the wrong word, technologically advanced. And my my big personal prior priorities with these trolls was that they should look really savage, you know, real killers and they're giant as well it's, it's very easy within role-playing games we often read descriptions of creatures that are 14 feet tall a humanoid creature 14 feet tall is massive and these things should just be unstoppable behemoths of destruction i'm quite you can tell i'm getting quite giddy about it but i think it's, it's really important to get get into these with quite a passion and i i always imagine like a tiny little hobbit figure in front of this guy that would just be chopped up and eaten. That brutality was something I really wanted to try and get into the um, the, the creatures, the shadow creatures. Um, and it took, I wanted a really nice counterbalance to the hobbits that are cheery, you know, with kind of like embroidered waistcoats and pipes and all these home comforts. And I wanted these kind of brutalized but draggled often, I use quite a lot of hair, these kind of broken and beaten and awful creatures that stand against everything that the hobbits stand for, of kind of order and civilization, almost manners, you know, to a fault with the hobbits on occasion, you know, that they're almost too rule-bound and mannered, but, but, but the, the, the baddie creature should be the opposite of that and just be totally brutal. And you know, it's not necessarily an easy job. I hope I hope I've imparted some of that into, into what I've done and made them genuinely frightening. We'll see. Tough to do with orcs and trolls. Tough area to reclaim. Now, just a warning here: if you are spider phobic, look away now. So, uh, another species of monster that I got to have some fun playing with was the spiders of Mirkwood. 
Um, and I did a lot of different sketches for these. I was really frightened of spiders as a kid, which is always a good thing. I think if you're drawing something, you want to make it really horrible, having some direct life experience of, of, of <laughs> real fear is a good thing. Um, and uh, yeah, of course, these are kind of tree dwelling spiders, murkwood, it's a pretty heavy environment, very claustrophobic. I have real strong memories of that section of The Hobbit from being a child. And I think drawing on childhood memories of this stuff is it's much more um, strongly felt when you're a child than when you're an adult. Um, so I had quite a fever dream remini uh, recollection of, of Mirkwood and that sequence in the book. So we started out here with just, just some drawings of spiders. I did quite a few different drawings and did quite a lot of research into spiders. Nothing too exhaustive, but just wanted to get the right balance of chittiness and hairiness. And then I came up with an idea that I didn't think would fly, if I'm honest. And that was of, of putting um, human-like heads onto the spiders. And I did check the text, and there's nothing to say the spiders don't have human heads. Uh, Tolkien, I've mentioned this several times, Tolkien doesn't do a lot of direct description. Um, there's a lot, of, you have to dig deep into the language to find, to find description often. But uh, it's a bit cheeky to, to take an omission of description as, as description, but um, I thought they looked really creepy. I can imagine these sort of old women's heads, these kind of knitters, you know, these spiders. And uh, I mentioned this to Francesco and to Don, and I really didn't think they would go for it. I thought it was too far out. Um, and I said they wouldn't go for it. I was a bit naughty and said, oh, I've got an idea, but I don't think you'll go for it. Which is quite, you know, it's a, it's a way of uh, trying to get your own way. A bit of reverse psychology. Apologies for that, gentlemen. Um, and uh, so I worked up these sketches and these spiders with these human heads and long hair again. Um, really creepy to me anyway, the, these were. I don't, I don't like these. <laughs> They're genuinely frightening. But then when you do something like that and you feel that way about it, you know you're onto a winner, I think. So I pressed forward. And amazingly, the guys proved the idea and we took it forward into paint. And you can see here, if you've watched the other videos, you'll, you'll be aware of the technique I'm using. Where I've, I've cut out the pencil drawing and I've overlaid some real world textures of real paintings or, or rough surfaces that I photographed. And um, I instantly got some great color cues from, from the textures I used. I did alter some of the colors to bring up some of these blues. Quite tricky, you know, the spiders dwell in a very greeny, blue, dark, murky world. And getting the colors right, I think was gonna be Whilst it would be a kind of invisible thing, I don't think you would instantly look at the final art and go, oh, the colours are right, it would really help bring that great feeling to them. Um, so that helped a lot, these sort of rusty colours and the blues work instantly, really nice colour combination. And uh, this is the final painted version, and like I say, I. I don't like these, I find these really creepy actually, I really want to kill these beasts, which is, you know, no bad thing for a, an, an adversary for a role playing game. Um, yeah, I think I think these are some of the best work I did for the game with these spiders. And again, largely because I can't stand spiders in real life. I'm not particularly phobic of them anymore, but I certainly was a kid. Yeah. Uh, something I was going to mention, in Tolkien so many things are old and ancient, it's, you know, it's a recurring theme that even the characters are, are quite old, you know, Aragorn is old and there's a lot of virtue in being old within Middle-earth, but equally there's a lot of, um, a lot of the corruption and a lot of the shadows to do with these ancient evils that kind of cooked away in places like Middle-earth, you know, um, Shelob of course sits in her tower and tunnels, kind of uh, brooding on past ills. And I think these guys in, in Mirkwood are, are very much the same. This kind of malignancy, malignant was a word that I used quite a bit. And I think it's a good, a good expression for, for the spiders and, and the generally the evil creatures of Middle-earth. So yeah, they were, it was quite a leap the guys took, put a lot of faith in me to allow me to do these. So thanks for that. So next up we have the perennial favourite, Smaug the Golden. And I mean what a what a thrill to get to uh, paint Smaug 
and first stop. Well, oh, a crazy behind the scenes story was I actually ended up with an afternoon to paint this painting, which is kind of insane. And it did strike me at the time, like, what are you doing? <laughs> You're painting one of these vastly iconic and important characters from, from Tolkien, which I adore. And I've got like sort of four and a half hours to do it. But hey, these are the breaks. This is the way the schedule works. And uh, hopefully on this occasion, it was one of those times where things went well due to time pressure. I, I, this is again one of my personal favourites from from the books. Um, so sketching him, I went straight back to Tolkien's own drawings of Smell because it's right there. The, the, the really nice drawings that, that the professor did. Um, there's always a necessity of some some updates, um, taste change, visual styles change, the way we had already laid down certain visual stylings, and to fit exactly what the professor did into what we already had could be problematic. And you see this in a lot of different artists' interpretations of Smaug very wildly from what the professor did, but I tried to keep as much as I possibly could, um, namely his uh, lizard-like legs, I wanted to keep, the fact he's a big lizard, the ridges down his back are very prominent, just the layout of his horns and his face. I was also very keen, oh the trefoil tail, you can only just about see it in the sketch, you'll see it in the final painting when that comes up. The fact that his, his tail was this three, almost three leaves to his tail, I wanted to keep that reference the original, but I did make him quite a lot bigger. Um, dragons generally have been growing over the last 50 years and it felt like he needed to be bigger. The description was him attacking the Lonely Mountain. Um, in conversation with, with Dom about the brief, Dom would imagine him kind of flying and attacking the Lonely Mountain. But for somewhere I got the phrase, Smaug descends the mountain. Might have been the title of the brief. And I, really, I had a very strong mental image of this very reptilian creature crawling down the mountain to an entrance almost upside down and swinging his head in and just blowing fire into the into the mountain into the, the dwarves stronghold there which of course threw up its own problems when we talk about the dwarf stronghold when you go to the text and you read the descriptions of the entrance to the lonely mountain it varies quite a bit it's not actually all that consistent and tolkien's own drawings confuse the issue even further so uh, at a time like that, you have and to really take the, the last important do something thing I wanted to say about, sense. about Smell was like a really wanted, wanted him to have a face that, happened with him that looked like someone that could talk, um, that he had mobile lips, and I wanted him to look kind of devilish. Um, and he's got a curl to his lip there, you know, he's very eloquent in the books, and he's, he's a, a wise old devil, isn't he, Smell? So I, some of that needed to be, be in there for definite for this image to work the way I wanted it to. And this one was first shown in SFX magazine, which was always nice, and it got the number one position in their image bank for whichever month it was. It appeared in May, perhaps. Uh, so that was that was nice. And there we go. What a joy it was to paint Smaug the Golden. <laughs>